Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back for the uh, semiconductor physics and uh, device one. So we will continue uh, to a lecture related to the device level. So in the uh, two weeks before, then we have been explained uh, the PN diode. And then from now on, we will start to move to the uh, the some of the key concepts that's needed for the uh, MOSFET device, metal oxide semiconductor uh, uh, field effect transistor. And before we uh, go to the MOSFET, first of all, we would like to talk about the, the one that is very essential to have a very good uh, MOSFET uh, device, which is uh, the junction between the metal and semiconductor. So therefore, in this uh, lecture, we will talk about the metal and semiconductor. So first of all, just uh, uh, remind you that uh, what's uh, the typical structure for the MOSFET. So in the case of the MOSFET, so as you already very familiar with uh, the, in the typical case of MOSFET. So you have this substrate, and then we have the uh, source and drain, and also we have the dielectric here. On top of the dielectric, we have the, the gate electrodes. So this is our gate side, that's the, the gate electrodes. Um, the one that we don't actually uh, draw in the very detail before is uh, that uh, if we try to apply the gate voltage, then that should be no problem because we already have the electrodes on top of the gate side. But however, if we still want to apply the drain voltage then we need to definitely to have the electrode here because otherwise there's no chance that we can apply the the drain voltage and then once we apply drain voltage we should start to have the drain current from the drain side and also in most of the case we will ground it the source in the source region but also the same we should have the electrodes in the source size otherwise we're not able to have the voltage that we can apply into our semiconductor so you can see actually in here and in here we have the metal and semiconductor junction so this one is a metal and semiconductor junction. So this is one that we will uh, have a look uh, for today's uh, this chapter, which is discussed between the metal and semiconductor junction. And typically, there are the two types of metal and semiconductor junction. One is Schottky contact. And another one is Ohmic contact. And the major difference between the Schottky and Ohmic is related to the the characteristic of the contact type between the metal and semiconductor junction. And typically, in the case of the Schottky contact, also will easily to form what we call the Schottky barrier diode. So this is also uh, once we have a Schottky contact, we will definitely have the Schottky barrier dial here. 
So then what's the major difference between the Shaki contact and the Omi contact? Which is mainly uh, we can see the difference from the IV characteristic. So if you look at for the typical diode characteristic or typical like two uh, terminal device which will apply the 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 voltage and then we will have the current. And in the case of only contact, basically that yeah, wherever we apply the voltage, we can always get the current output here. So you can see the linear correlation between the voltage and current here. So that's a typical ohmic contact. That's a typical ohmic contact. But in the case with the Shaki contact, as we have it already say that the ohmic contact can actually lead into the case of the Shaki barrier diode. And we have been seen from the last uh, chapter about the PN diode, which you have very similar characteristic in the uh, Shaki barrier diode as well. So in the case of the Shaki barrier diode, the typical characteristic is shown in here. So you will be able to apply, start to have a current here. So the current will be only increased as long as your voltage, which is larger than the certain of the voltage here. You should go in this way, it's much more clear. Okay, so you have a certain of the uh, voltage barrier. And therefore, once your voltage is applied larger than this turn down voltage, then you start to have the current. So that's a typical type of a Shaki barrier diode here. And also, in the case of reverse, since we have the junction barrier, so this can sustain a certain of the reverse voltage and until uh, before it reached to the breakdown. So as we have already explained, this is because of the breakdown. And this is because once the voltage is larger than our turn on voltage here. So therefore we have the, the Shaki barrier uh, diode here. Okay, so in this chapter, we will talk about the relationship between the and the the relationship. We can see that the 呃，除了正常的在 gate side 我们会有电极以外，其实我们在这 drain side 我们也会有电极。那我们在 source side 也会有电极。那这个电极的特性基本上会影响到我们最后呃电压跟这个电流的关系。那一般我们称作这个电极跟这个呃 semiconductor 的的接面就叫做是 metal semiconductor 呃 junction。那一般来说，这个这种 metal semiconductor junction 两种，一种是所谓的 s h a c k y 康泰，一种是所谓的欧米康泰。那消费康泰其实它它有消费康泰，它就会形成所谓的这个 s h a c k y barrier 的这个二极体。所以跟我们之前谈论的 P N 二极体其实非常特性非常非常类似。所以就是当你的电压要加到一定的电压之后，超过它的 barrier 之后，你才可以是去参考你的这个电流。那当你在 reverse bias 的时候，其实你也可以同时承受一定电压，在呃，达到崩溃电压之前，那欧米康泰的话，其实就很直觉，基本上就是一个很线性的这个 I V 的一个特性。那所以当我们加电压的时候，就开始会有这个电流。OK， so that's a pretty uh uh a short recap that the what's the main goal that we were going to discuss today for the metal semiconductor. OK. So first of all, we still would like to back to the understanding come from the the the, the band diagram as we have been seen that the the band diagram is uh, one of the most important uh 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 tool that we needed to analyze the semiconductor. So first of all, the Shaki barrier dial as we have been already mentioned that's uh, the reason leading to the Shaki barrier dial is because of we have the Shaki contact. It's because we have the Shaki contact here. So first of all, 
we need to define certain of the things before we consider the, the Sharky convex. So, um, just uh, for your information, that the, the Sharky compact metal semiconductor dial is one of the first practical semiconductor the device used in the early uh, 19th and was a metal semiconductor dial. So, that's uh, one of the first uh, device actually we are using. So, before that, we go to the really uh, uh, a band diagram. We need to first to look at the, the, the typical case that the, if we haven't put the metal and then the semiconductor together, and what will be the, the band diagram look like? So, first of all, if you consider in the case of the metal in the left hand side. And also in the, you have the P type semiconductor in the right hand side. So as you already are very familiar with that if we have the P type semiconductor, so that suggests this is your conduction band, this is your valence band here. The P type semiconductor suggests that your Fermi level. is close to your valence band. Your Fermi level is close to your valence band. And also we have been previously already defined that the, the in the middle between the EC and EB, which is the intrinsic uh, Fermi level here. And usually we will also define the reference here. And therefore, the difference between the this line and also the EC is what we usually call this as an electron affinity. This one. This one is what we usually call electron affinities here. So that's uh, this one. This is known as uh, electron affinity. And also, again, we can also define the, the phi s, which is here between the EF. Here, so that's why we define this one as uh, phi s, in which phi s is a semiconductor uh, work function. So this is semiconductor wall function. So since we have a semiconductor wall function, we definitely also need to consider the, the, ma the metal wall function. So the phi m is what we call this as a, the metal wall function. Metal wall function. So the metal wall functions, usually we can draw in this way. Consider the EF is here. And this one is our metal work function. Okay, so this is a band diamond before we put the metal and P type semiconductor together. However, once we put together, the most important rule is that uh, the Fermi level become constant through the system under the thermal equilibrium case. So this will be constant in the system because of this is under the thermal equilibrium case. So in this case, then 
they must be certain of the band bending will be happen between the metal and semiconductor. So if we quickly draw, we still the same. This one is a p-type here. So this is our EC and this is our EV here. Uh, then in this case, if we consider this is a case in the metal and p-type semiconductor. But uh, if we consider the 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 Schottky barrier dot in the case of this one is n-type semiconductor. And then in this case, that means our Fermi level, our Fermi energy is close to our valence band. This is our EF. And also we have the, in the middle, we have the EFI. Oh, we can show this. Yes, so we have here. And since right now, our uh, Shaki barriers are all uh, uh, formula will be the constant in the uh, thermal equilibrium case and this means that we will start to see the band will be bending like here and this is because we need to align our EF with our uh, Schottky uh, metal wall function here. So then in here we have and therefore we can see our band diagram would be starting at the band bending here. So we have the band bending in this region because of a Due to trying to align the 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 metal wall function and also the 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 semiconductor wall function here, and usually in this case we consider this one is what we call the QBBI, the building voltage. So that's exactly the same uh, one we have been used in the uh, PN dial. And also, this is considered as a Q5B. And also, right now, I believe once we see these band bandings, that actually suggests that this has a depletion region. This means that we have a depletion region between the, the metal and then the semiconductor. So in order for the Fermi level to become constant in the system under the thermal equilibrium, so electrons from the semiconductor flow into the low energy state in the metal, and therefore we have the positive charge donors often remain in the semiconductor, and therefore in this case, we create a space a uh, 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 charge region, right? So you can see right now, in this case, your Fermi level, which is far away from your conduction band. So that means you have a positive space charge in this region here. So that's a band diagram if you consider the, the metal and then also the untied semiconductor, we will see this kind of the, the band bending. And therefore, we can try to calculate the Schottky barrier here. Still the same. This is an n-type semiconductor. This is n-type semiconductor. So the Schottky barrier here, the phi b zero, will be equal to our phi m minus infinity, and then also the v b i will be equal to the Phi B0 minus Phi M here. So 
a different material has a different electron affinity here. So you can see this is electron affinity and the one we use very often, which would be the silicon, which is around in this uh, level. And also the metal wall function is depends on our materials here. And then the often use uh, material for the electrodes, which would be the, for example, aluminum and gold and also the nickel and the PT and PI. These are the 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 uh, metal electrodes that we often use to put in the uh, source and drain. And the analysis of the Sharkey Barrier die is very similar to the previous case when we try to analysis for the uh, PN dies. We will also discuss the case when we under the forward and the reverse bias. So when we apply the positive voltage, apply positive voltage to a semiconductor with respect to the metal, the semiconductor to metal barrier will increase and the barrel height remains constant in this case. This bias condition is called the uh, uh, reverse bias. This is called the reverse bias here. And when we have the positive voltage bias applied to the metal with respect to the semiconductor, and also in this case, the barrier is reduced. And once reduced, that means you have electrode and more easily to uh, flow between the, the electron can be more easily flow the semiconductor into the metal since the barrier high has been reduced. So electron can easily flow from the metal to the semi uh, to from the flow from the semiconductor into the metal since the barrier is uh, reduced. And in this case, this is under the case of forward bias. Forward bias here. And try if we try to need to understand the, the, the text mentioned here, you for sure you still need the help between the for the help from the the the, the, the band diagram. So let's look at the band diagram under the forward and reverse case. So once this is under the reverse bias, and then also if you consider the, this is n type, so EF is here. EF is close to your conduction band here. So once we apply under reverse bias, that means this one between your metal EF. This is the difference between this one. This and this is equal to the one that you have for the is equal to the one that you have for the, the reverse bias. This is one that uh, how much the reverse bias we apply here. That's equal to the reverse bias here. And also, and that means, so seems you have applied the EF here. So that means that uh, your, the total barrier highs will be increased as well. And then you will have this kind of the band bending. This will be still your Q5B. Going this way. Okay, so in this case, your 
total barrier points become QBBI plus Q, uh, QVBI plus QVR. So, and then in this case, that suggests that the, your barrier heights increase. That means that uh, you won't have the chance that the current can blow because of this barrier heights increase. So this is a discussion under the case of the n-type semiconductor here. And also in the case when we try to apply under the, the four bias, so analysis is very similar. So the analysis will be the similar and also we will apply the e, this is our EF. This is our EF. Uh, just wait a moment. Okay, sorry. So in the case under the, the, the four bias here, in the case under the four bias, so this is uh, uh, the barrier for sure will be uh, reduced. So it's still the same, this will be our And therefore, the barrier height, the QVBI minus VA. So that's a, the, the four bars we apply. So that means our barrier will be reduced into this apply voltage here. So in this case, this is our 5B. And this is the uh, VA. This is a voltage we apply, so this is a, a VA here. So these analyses are very similar to the previous uh, PN diet here. So if you are not familiar with this, I suggest you can go back to uh, look at for the, the PN dial, and then the same analysis is applied here to understand the Shaky barrier dial, which actually is also considered in the case of a four wall and then reverse. Okay, so we move to the next one. So there's a certain more try to analysis to have the certain of the analytical calculation. And again, we will be interesting to see determine the electrostatic property of the junction in the same way as we do for the, the PN junction here. So in this case, the one that we already used for the previous calculation which is the, the E dx is equal to our charge. So the analysis is here, it's very similar to the case of for our previous analysis on the, uh, when we consider the PN dial here. So once we have this equation, then we do the integration and then also the electric field is zero. As a space charge in the semiconductor. 
So once we have this boundary condition, we are able to calculate C1 and also in the end to have the electric field distribution as well. And therefore the space charge region with W, maybe we can calculate that in the case when we try to calculate in the PN junction. So the result is identical to that one of the one-sided PN junction. So therefore, the W here is equal to And the reason that this result is very similar to the one side pH junction just uh, uh, remind you that what does it mean for the one side pH junction? So this is uh, M plus plus P. And we have been talking about that for typical pH junction, we have the typical uh, concentration for the N and typical concentration for the P. So that's uh, N and P. But uh, in the case with one-sided, so that means we have a one side which we have very highly, higher concentration level. So in this case, we have the N plus plus, that's a very high concentration level. And we have been already saying that if we have a high concentration level, usually that suggests the depletion region in this side is very, very narrow here. So in this case, we can almost ignore the depletion region in the N plus plus. However, the majority of the depletion width which will be happen in the P side, so that's W. So therefore the W is equal to WP here, yeah, W equal to WP. And the same thing can be applied for our understanding in the Schottky junction as well. So in the case of the Schottky junction, we have still the same, the P type of the semiconductor. Uh, but the problem is we don't have the N plus plus now, we have the metal here we can consider the metal is a material that is a highly doping that the metal is a material that we have very higher concentration so in this case we also will only have the depletion region in the p side So therefore, your total depletion region is equal to the depletion region in the P side. So this is the case for the Schottky junction. So now you can see that actually the Schottky junction, to be honest, is not a new thing if you already understand about the PN junction. So the Schottky junction, that would be only as a one special case when we consider the PN junction. So if you are not familiar with the PN junction, I suggest you can go back to have a look at that one. So once you can fully understand PN junction, the Schottky junction is, that would be no problem for you. Okay. And then the junction capacitance, that's how we already did it previously. And we do this as the same thing that the, the junction capacitance can be also determined in the same way as we do for the PN junction. So the equation is shown me here. And this is considered in the case we have the E sub. And then we have the metal. We have metal and P sub here. Um, in this case, uh, that we can, by using this equation, in the end, we can have this one 
1 over c will be equal to 2 vbi plus vr x zones and d so that's a the the the, the same uh, equation that we have previously derived here. So therefore, if we try to want to obtain the building potential VBI here, and then slope, we can calculate for the doping of the ND, so the slope here. And therefore, we can start to estimate the potential fire and then determine the Sharkey barrier uh, 5B0 here. So that's a very useful equation for the, for the practical purpose. For the typical, the, the, when we discuss for the fundamental series, uh, most of the students, they will ignore the junction capacitance because in the theory, from the uh, point of the series side, that actually there's uh, not much needed to further uh, pay attention for the disjunction capacitance. For the, for the real application that we open to use this junction capacitance, because that can help us to determine the, some critical parameters like the VBI, like ND, and so on, and so on. Okay, and however, when we consider the shocking barrier diet, there's a very important non-ideal effect on the barrier height, which will be the what we call this as a shocking barrier Roy effect. Shocking barrier Roy effect. The shocking effect, or sometimes we consider this is because due to the, the image force low induced lowering of the potential barrier here. So the reason is that uh, if we have electron in the dielectric material at a certain or distance x from the metal, actually this will create the electric field. That's a, no problem. Uh, the, for the, from the high school physics, we already learn about this. But uh, actually, this electric field can determine by actually adding an image charge that's inside the metal located at the same distance x from the interface. So therefore, we have the metal, we have the semiconductor. Metal and semiconductor here. So if we have the electrons in here, inside of the semiconductor. And actually, we can create the one image charge. Here, and this one is with the same distance. So this is uh, x and this is x here. And therefore, this will create the electric field distribution shown in here. So therefore, based on this type of the electric field distribution, we can calculate this force here, and in the end, leading to this potential distributions in the potential distrib distribution here. And this one will give a certain effect because that will create our shocking barrier will be reduced. So therefore the shocking barrier is ideally, we have been previous have been drawn that our ideal shocking barrier is shown in here. But right now, because we create the image charges inside of our semiconductor, these leaving the certain of the shocky barrier lowing effect. So this is a one delta phi here. That's a one reduced here. And therefore the delta phi here is calculated as shown here. 
is equal to e e for pi x log here and this is proportional to our applied electric field so that means once we give a large reverse bias here actually the shaky barrier uh, the shaky barrier lowering effect will become uh, further uh, increase will become more obvious here so your q phi b plus is equal to your q phi b minus your q delta phi here so since this is increased so that means your effective barrier height is reduced and the effective barrier height is reduced that's also leading to the problem of increase of the current here and you can see that uh, this is a certain of the understanding here we can uh, draw in a way that it can be uh, more easily for you to understand so in the case of IV characteristic so I believe now you have very uh, familiar with uh, typical IV curve here this is typical case turn on once your voltage is larger than certain voltage you start to turn on and under the reverse stay remain low and, and then you have reached for the average breakdown so that's because when you have reached for the breakdown and once we consider but it does that's for the ideal case but in reality if we consider for the barrier lowering effect um, there's nothing change from the forward side but however you can see this is already increased here and this is because we consider the barrier lowering effect here. so because of once you apply the bias here then actually your 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 uh the the, the ba effective barrier is reduced and therefore that's leading to the higher reverse leakage current here so this is the same this is a one if we consider no barrier lowering and this is which consider the barrier low effect and this is considered for the multiplications here that means this is considering for the average breakdown so in the case of average breakdown we can also find that the even the reverse currents become higher this is the average breakdown that's because we have the the imperialization we had the electron and hole pairs here okay so the barrier high for the semiconductor junction is also determined by the metal function that we already discussed and also the semiconductor service or the interface state interface states here so as uh, we previously already uh, shown that the entry in the case of the MOSFET here so we have the source strength here and then we will deposit the gate directory and on top of gate directory we have the gate here but we have been uh, aware of that actually in this interface 
it's a curved line for the certain of the surface here. So if you can imagine the typical slick uh, uh, lattice arrangement is something you have the here, here, and then each one will bonding with some other lattice. Oh, sorry, this and then in each one we have the certain of the covalent bonds with other. But in this interface, actually, you just stop your silicon in a certain of the uh, uh, interface. That means you actually break the the bonding between the silicon and silicon uh, alternates here. So you actually break in this way. So because that's why you you have this kind of service here, and this kind of the break the bondings leading to the interface state. This is leading to interface state. And this interface states creates a certain of the problem for the device stability here. Um, the same thing, this is a case for the MOSFET, but also in the uh, shocking barrier dial, this interface, the bonding is not perfect here. This also creates the certain interface state as shown me here. So this is the interface state right here. And this is the case for the T-type semiconductor. So assume the old state below the surface potential phi zero are donor state. So donor state, which will be the donor state, means that uh, this will be neutral if the state contains an electron, and also this become positively charged if state does not contain an electron. So that's uh, the definition for the donor state here. So assume the old state above the five zero are acceptor state. So the definition of the acceptor state is that uh, this will be neutral if the state does not contain electron and negative charge if the state contain an electron here. So once you capture the the electron, this state will become like the, the negative charge. So that's a acceptor state. So this is uh, the uh, 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 two type of the the state that's either due to the donor state or acceptor state. Um, this is uh, uh, more related to the reliability when we consider like the donor trap, donor state or acceptor trap, acceptor state here. Uh, in here, just for your information, if you are uh, or would like to know more some of this in detail, you can follow my another courses which is related to reliability we will talk about more about the donor and acceptor in here just try to try your best to 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 memorize this definition here so by consider we have the acceptor state and donor state here and then we can find out that the, the equation is shown here and the equation is related to the dit here the so dit here is actually the interface state density. This is interface state density here. And here we don't derive the equation, but we just quickly show that how important of this interface, because you can see in the equation, there's the interface state density inside. 
So if we assume the interface state density is constant and equal to dit, this is dit here, and therefore you can have this equation, which we already show in the previous slide. But the problem is that if your dit is very huge, it's very large here, it's approach to the infinity here, your barrier height is reduced to the equation for the barrier height is considered in this way. And then you found out that this is independent of our metal work function and also the electron affinity here. So that means the barrier height here is now fixed by the bank of energy and the potential phi zero. And then the barrier height is totally independent. Totally independent of the metal wall function and the semiconductor electron affinity, the Fermi label becomes PIM. This is how we call the PIM here. As a service. And this is how we call this as a Fermi label PIN effect. Fermi level pinning effect here. Uh, one more thing I want to mention that uh, the concept when we talk about for the interface state and the Fermi level pinning uh, is a little bit advanced um, because of uh, is when you uh, have the several years experience in semiconductor device measurement, reliability, or fabrication, you will find out that the, the interface always uh, the one creates a lot of the issues here. And most of the issues here is related to this interface state here. And however, if interface state is too large, then that creates what we call the firm level pinning. And this firm level pinning leading to the problem that we are not able to uh, adjust the shaky barrier high randomly by considering the different metal here because of this firm level pinning is kind of like it's fixed or very high here. So that's created a, a certain of a problem here. And once we consider the ideal case that the, the, the interface state density is approached to the zero, which is the perfect case we want it, and level of very high here can be easily adjust by our metal work function and also the electron affinity here. And this is something that we wanted because we don't want the, the, the inference come from the interface state. You can imagine that the interface state is something that is undesirable. That means it's something that we don't want it. We will try our best to reduce the interface state density as low as possible, no matter what kind of a technology you are working on. For the advanced silicon, advanced film fab, film fab like a ferroelectric device, like the, 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 the power device, high frequency device, or even the 2D device here, we're always suffering the interface state issues here. It's always uh, the, the very nice and the big challenge is that the, the lots of the researcher and lots of engineering trying to work on to reduce the interface state density. Okay, so finally we come to the current voltage relationship here. So this is a schematic for the metal and semiconductor. So that's uh, the, the Shaki uh, diet here. And then the symbolic for this uh, uh, dial is shown here. The symbol for the Shaki dial is uh, drawing this way.
So therefore, we have the current yeah. We have a current here, and then once we apply the, the forward voltage here. So the equation basically, basically the equation are very similar to the, 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 the one we have been show for the PN diode here. And this is uh, some of the detail for the JST here. And if you look at for the typical IV characteristic, we call IV characteristic. This is a uh, I, and this is a uh, a V here. Uh, uh, when we consider the forward characteristic, this is a uh, our Shaki dial. And once we increase our barrier height here. So the barrier height is always leading to the increase or turn on voltage as well. Uh, I should go on precisely. So that's uh, when the 5B is increased. So the, when the 5B is increased, that's also uh, result that uh, for our the turn on voltage for our diode is become larger here. So this is a V turn on voltage. So when we have the higher uh, barrier high, so that's leading to the turn on voltage is higher as well. Okay, so we spend uh, most of the time discussing in the case of the, the Shockey dial here. But now there's a case, what we call the, the metal semiconductor ohmic compact here. So probably we can take a short break here and then we will come back in the 10 minutes, met, uh, minutes later. So we come back at the 1040 to continue for the metal, semi, metal semiconductor ohmic compact.
Okay, hello everyone. So we will continue to discuss in the case of the OMI context. So the OMI context also calls this a non a rectifying barrier. So the previous Sharkey uh, die is also called a, a rectifying barrier. So in the case of OMI context, we can consider this is non rectifying barrier here. So omic contact are the metal to semiconductor contact, but in this case they are not a, a rectifying contact. Rectifying in uh in Mandarin called the, the zen liu, so they are not a rectifying contact. So an omic contact is a is a low resistance junction. Uh, providing conduction in both direction between the metal and semiconductor. In providing conductions in both direction between the metal and semiconductor here. So as we previously already explained that the, the typical characteristic for the, the Omi contact, which is uh, The one with the current versus the voltage here, and we have the current conduction in the four wall and reverse as well. So, and um, then usually this can be also uh, expressed as a resistance. This can be also consider as a resistance here. So when we increase this one, and this is our, which means that the different slope that suggests that the, the different kind of a resistance. So different kind of resistance here. So the phi n uh, idea, non rectifying barrier is phi n smaller than the phi s here. So in the case, still we will use as a band diagram to understand. So this is uh, the metal. And this is, uh, for example, the N type semiconductor here. So this is the EC and this is uh, EV. EC and EV here. And we consider this is an N type since this is an N type. So since this is an N type semiconductor, so your Fermi your Fermi uh, energy is here. So that's the EF here. And also, as we previously explained, that uh, we have the electron affinity E pi and also the, the bias. Electron affinity, and also the EF. Even here, and this is our the metal work function. So in order to have the the non rectifying barrier here, so we need to have the metal work function which is smaller than our semiconductor work function as shown here. So therefore, in this case, we were leading to the band diagram of EC
So this is EC and EV here. And we have the metal. EC and EV here. And then also in this case, This is the EF here. So this is our EF. EF here, so that's our phi BF, and this is our phi F, phi N here. So in order to achieve the thermal equilibrium in this junction, the electron, the flow from the metal to the low energy state in the semiconductor, which makes the surface of a semiconductor even more untyped. More types so that's leading to become the the only type of the the the, the metal and semiconductor junction. And also in the case when we consider the phi, which is larger phi s, so that's a case between in the uh, semiconductor with a p type semiconductor. So that's the EC and that's the EV here, and we have the EF. And also the FIAS, this is our FIAS. This is our FIAS here. And in the case of the metal wall functions larger than FIAS, Yeah. Here. And then because of our phi is larger than phi s. So the one before we put the metal on top of the semiconductor and then the the the, the, the band diagrams look like in this way. And once we put together So we have the EC and EV here, and then we have the EFI. EFI here, and then this is, this is uh, uh, the band diagram here, and we have the EF. And therefore, this is E by P. E by P, and this is a one. So, in the case of the our only contact formation in the p-type semiconductor. The band diagram looks like a show me here. And also there's a one case, a spatial case, what we call the, the tunneling barrier here. The space charge 
with a rectified metal semiconductor contact is inversely proportional to the square root of the semiconductor doping. So the width of depletion region decreases as the doping concentration in the uh, semiconductor increase. That's where we already discussed before. And therefore, the doping concentration increase, then the probability of the tunneling through the barrier increase. So we can see that uh, actually, we can see in this case, we can have the electron tunneling in this region because of we trying to, this one is N and this one is N plus plus. And therefore, once we uh, uh, increase the concentration, so that means our depletion width can uh, decrease. And then once the depletion width decreases, then the probability of the tunneling through the barrier can be increased. So this is also one possibility to make the OMI contact here. And also, this is very useful for us because of in the current advanced semiconductor, we're always trying to look for the method trying to reduce or for our counter resistance here. So as you probably already know that we have the source, we have the drain here. And in the source drain, we will deposit as a metal here. And then the metal, the resistance between the metal and semiconductor is the one we consider for the, the RC. So this is RC, this is a contact resistance here. And once it's possible, we can try to reduce the RC is we make this one as a N plus plus, N plus plus. So show me here if we have N plus plus, and then we can reduce the contact resistance, and which will be very good for our device because we can have the device have the very large output current here. Okay, so finally, it's a one that just quickly show that how we can uh, consider the, the doping concentration with respect to the country resistance here. And therefore, you can see with inside of this equation, there's uh, two uh, parameters that's very important. One is uh, very high and one is uh, doping. So therefore, we can uh, either try to reduce the barrier high or we increase the doping, then the overall goal we can have the, the lower contact resistance here that can be formed between the metal and semiconductor junctions here. So the goal for us is always trying to have the contact resistance as low as possible. And in this case, we can have the higher up current for our semiconductor device here. Okay, so this is what we have for the metal and semiconductor. Then we will start to move to the, the metal arsen semiconductor field effect transistor. Okay, so finally we move to the, we have been talking about lots of, lots of uh, fundamental knowledge here. Finally, we have been moved to the, the, the case we are really interested in is in the case of the MOSFET. So the MOSFET is previously mentioned is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So that's how we call as a MOSFET. But the essential part of MOSFET actually, most of the, the, the knowledge related to MOSFET we have already discussed. For example, the, the PN junction, the metal 
are side uh, metal semiconductor these kind of thing and also the sound the the the, the key point related to the the uh, uh, the band diagram here and then we were trying to uh, combine all what we have been learned before and then we try to put all of them together and then that will become our most best device so first of all in the most best device the heart of MOSFET is what we call the MOS capacitance here so a MOS capacitance is uh, the, the, the critical very important part for the MOSFET device here so if we have the silicon substrate if we have a silicon substrate we have a silicon substrate and we deposit our dielectric Deposit the dielectric, what we usually have is a silicon dioxide. That's the one we use very often. And then with the silicon dioxide, usually we uh, have the 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 the, the sum of parameter to describe the characteristic for the silicon dioxide. And one is what we call the dielectric constant here. This is a dielectric. Constant. And also another one is the thickness. Tx. So that's a uh, oxide thickness here. And then on top of this one, we will start to deposit as an electron. So this is a gate metal. Gate metal here. And then we can start to apply the gate bias here. So this simple structure usually we call this as a capacitor. And you can see in this structure actually there's no source and drag here. We mainly to investigate the characteristic when we apply the gate bias on top of the this kind of MOS uh, capacitors here. So the capacitance per unit error is defined by this one is a dash constant and this one is your thickness here. So in this case, we can have for this one, this is a E x, this one is A zone x, A zone zero here. And because of the, we have the uh, dash constant, which is a uh, combined by these two x on x and then x on zero here so that's a typical capacitor equation and then the magnitude of the charge per unit actually is written in this one okay so the next step is start to again we will analyze the energy band diagram here so what we are doing is we start to apply the electric field. So assume you have the charge separated by this uh, insulator here. Uh, so this this one. So you have the So in the between is our SiO2. So in the case of the, uh, we have the Dutch constant X zone, which is because of we consider this in between is a second dioxide here. And this distance between these two is called the, the D here. And once we start to apply the voltage here, So if we apply the voltage, this is positive, this is negative, this is V. So this is once we apply the voltage in this way that we apply the positive from the bottom and then the 
negative from the top and therefore this will actually show me here so accumulation layer of the holes and the oxide semiconductor junction corresponding to a positive charge on the bottom plate of the MOS capacitance. So once we apply the positive charge uh, bias here, then so sure you will have the positive charge on the bottom plate and then also the negative charge on the top plate here. And this will lead into the magnetic of the electric field in this direction. So this is E field. This is E field here. So that's uh, in the case. And that can be also understood if we consider in real case of the MOS MOS capacitors. So we have the P type here. So we have T type here, and then we have the dielectric so this is our dielectric here and then on top of dielectric we have another metal so as we previously as we have been shown here so if now we connect us uh, so the voltage source as shown here. And this is a uh, V, this is positive, this is negative. And if we connect to here, and we connect to here. So that means we will have the positive charge will be formation on the bottom one. So you will have the hole here from this direction and then you will have the electron accumulate on top of the electron here. So this will lead into you have the E field as shown here. So this one is exactly the same just like here, but this one is the real case happen in the MOS capacitance. So we can also simplify this one, consider the case of here. So we have the this one and on top of this one we have the dielectric. And then from this one we have the metal. Metal here. So this is will be the uh uh, once we apply the voltage, positive voltage from the bottom, once we apply the voltage from the we will have the, this one, this accumulations for the large of the holes. Okay, so that's the first case. So when we try to apply the 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 the, the button, the positive voltage, and then the 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 negative voltage on the top, and then we will see there's a accumulation layer of the larger force can be observed here. So. And then the same situation can be happen if we actually start to apply the positive uh, charge, positive voltage on the top here. So you can see in the case of the positive. And also the same, we will have the, this one, which will be our dielectric, and then on top of dielectric is our gas metal.
So if we apply This is a positive voltage here. And if we apply positive voltage for sure, then we will start to have the positive charge here. And then the positive charge will push away for our holes here. So this leading to our electric field in this uh, direction here. So if electric field penetrates semiconductor, in this case, the majority carrier hole will experience a force away from the outside semiconductor interface. So since the four holes are pushed away from interface, so we will actually have the, a negative space charge region we created because of the, we have the fixed ionized acceptor ozone here. So therefore the hole has been pushed away. Therefore that means you will lead into the, the negative space charge in this region here. So the, the negative charge in space induced pressure region will corresponding to uh, become the negative charge for the bottom plate for the MOS capacitance. So once we apply the party here, because we push away of the hole here, so this will lead into the, the, the negative uh, uh, space charge region as shown here. So for previous analysis, we can start to uh, draw the band diagram to further confirm that what we have been uh, uh, analysis before. So first of all, in the case where we have the zero voltage apply, zero voltage apply here. So in this case, we have this one. So we have the, this is our conduction band, this is valence band. And in the case of P type semiconductor, yeah. So this will be the P type semiconductor here. And then we apply the VG. Apply VG here. So that's a zero voltage apply here. So in this case, we consider what we call the, the there's a case we call as a flat band. So that uh, means the energy band are flat. And indicate that there's no existing charge. no charge exists in the semiconductor. In the semiconductor here. So that's a, when we consider what we call the flat band, that means you don't have the band bending in here. And that means we don't have the, 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 the charge exists in the semiconductor. But now we consider if we have the negative voltage applied. So if we apply negative voltage here, so if we apply negative voltage again, this is still the same for our Fermi energy here. So that's our EF, and then this is our EC. This is our EC and EV here, and then we have the here, here, here. So that's a uh, when we apply the 
a negative voltage. We will apply negative voltage here. So once we apply negative voltage, so we can see that the, the band will be bending upward here. So that means your right now your firm level is getting close to your uh, balance band. So that means you have the all accumulation in here. So right, so that's uh, exactly the same case when we discussed previously, like here. So you have a negative voltage applied on top and then leading to you have the whole accumulation in the uh, below our dielectric here. So this can be also understood by considering the band diagram here. So on the other hand, if we consider the case, we apply the positive voltage applied. So if you apply the positive voltage here, So we have applied positive voltage then. So we have the DC, EV here. And again, we are firmly label is around here. And we apply the voltage here. So since we apply negative voltage, a uh, party voltage, so you have the band bending uh, downward here. So you can see this one become like here. And that means that uh, right now, your Fermi label in this interface is close to your conduction band. That means you have induced negative space charge. Use negative space charge with the depletion width of this one. Right? So that's also the same one that we previously discussed here. That's the same one also we previously discussed here. Also, uh, I think we can maybe also take another the 10 minutes break here so allow you have some time to follow up this drawing and then if you still have any question feel free to ask me so we will start so right now it's 11 15 so we will uh come back in the 11 25 so i know it's, it's a, a monday morning after the mother's day holiday yesterday so i know that Many of you might feel very sleepy, cannot concentrate. So we will, we can for sure slow down for our progress. That should be no problem. And also allow you have some time to keep notes if you, because there's many drawing in, in, in this slide. So we'll come back at the 11.25.
Uh, hello everyone. So let's uh, one question related to the the midterm evaluation has been done. So the answer is not yet. So we have more than uh sixty submission for this, and then it will take the uh, at least at least one month to finish the evaluation. But once we I finish, I will let you know as soon as possible. Okay, so welcome back. So let's continue to discuss more about these two terminal MOS structure. So now, if we apply a sufficient large positive gate bias, so, so we apply a large gate bias here. So we have inverted the service of a semiconductor from P type to an N type. And then we have a created and the inversion layer. So we have created an inversion layer. Of the electrons at the semiconductor of the interface. So what does this mean? So that also can be understood from the band diagram here. So again, we have the EC and EV here. So that's a conduction band, that's a, a valence band. But and then we have the the Fermi level here. So if we try to apply our gate bias here as a larger as a possible then we can start to pull down this band bending so this will be our the gate side so that will be our gate side here and once we apply a large positive, so we will start to pushing this one and going down. And then that means actually this is our Fermi EF here. So you can see there's a chance that the conduction band and the Fermi level are pretty close. And this close means that the layer start to invert the electrons here. That uh, means this becomes the N type here. So therefore we start to create the inversion layer of the electron here. This is under the case of large bias, large positive bias. So under the large party bias, we start to have this inversion layer in the service between the dielectric and then also the p-type semiconductor. So the two terminal of the MOS structure can be also that's a uh, previously we have been drawing and this is uh, the schematic like the more a uh, nice figure to illustrate that the case and this is a case for example under the n-type semiconductor and then in the case of n-type semiconductor this just uh, just a uh, completely like opposite direction compared to the p-type semiconductor here so in the case of n-type semiconductor we apply the positive voltage apply and then we start to accumulate the electrons here. So we have the accumulation of the electrons. And then once we apply the negative voltage applied here, then we have the 
space charge create space charge region space charge region will be created and then if we apply the large negative then we start to have the the whole inversion here so we can see this is whole inversion so basic idea that's uh, exactly the same compared to the case with the p-type just a reverse way of the uh, the charge induced for the p-type we will invert the electron but for the n-type we will have the whole inversion work uh, creating Okay, so regarding to a depletion layer signal, so the potential 5p is a difference between the EFI and then the EF. So this is a 5p is a difference between the EFI and the EF here. And this is a case where we consider for the P substrate here, and then P substrate, and when we start to apply the positive gain bias and then the bias here is called the service potential service potential here so we can see the 5fp is equal to vp natural low na over an i here and this is when we apply a small uh gate voltage here so that's induce phase charge region space charge region so space charge width can now be written in a very similar to way to our previous what we discussed for the the one side DPN junction. So now you can see actually the most bit just trying to combine that the everything we learned before and then we put together and that's uh, become the, the most bit transistor. So most of the equation actually also is more or less the same. So for example, the diffusion width here is similar the induced space charge region so this e n a and this two exons bias this is the equation is shown in here and also that in the case the energy band when we consider the case of a phi s is equal to 2 phi f p consider the case where phi s equal to 2 phi f p here so the condition here is non uh so the threshold hole inversion point So this is now a threshold inversion point and the voltage now applied leading to this point is also known as a threshold voltage known as a threshold voltage here so this is a voltage that actually will apply leading to start to have the current here so if you still remember the previously we have already mentioned that in the case of the MOSFET so we have ID versus VG here and then once we apply the certain voltage as a larger as enough then the current start to increase here and usually we define this one as a VTH so that's how we call this as a threshold hole voltage. So 
that's exactly this one. VTH. So you can see now the threshold voltage is very important parameter for the uh, MOSFET transistor because that's determine which point how much voltage is enough to start to turn on of our channels here. The electron concentration at the service is exponential function of the service uh, potential here. So that means our NS here is proportional to exponential service potential. So the service potential might increase by only a few kilovolts, but which will change the electron concentration by order of the magnitudes here. But the space charge width only slightly change. So in this case, the space charge region has essentially to reach a, a maximum width. Has reached the maximum width. This is because of the the once you apply the voltage which is larger than your threshold voltage, you can immediately to have the lot of the inversion charge will be uh, generated, and then most of voltage drop will be in the inversion charge here, and therefore you this depression region will reach for the, the maximum width shown here. So this is a case where our phi s is equal to 2 phi f p. So if, if the phi s is equal to 2 phi f p, then we start to have the, 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 the service electron, we have the inversion electron can be uh, generated here. So this is electron in here is exactly so we have the source ram and have the s metal so once our vg is larger than VTH here. So that means we start to have the charge, negative charge, inversion charge is below the channel. So that's exactly as shown me here. The, the inversion charge in the band diagram is indicate that we start to have the channel formations below the dielectric and also in the meantime because of we have applied the drain voltage here so therefore this is a positive drain bias so positive drain bias will attract some of the electron here so therefore your electron will be blocked from the source to the drain side in the end this will become to our drain current so that's why you start to see the drain current increase as shown here. This is uh, the same thing. So finally, if you can understand what I'm saying, actually you already catch at least more than 80% of the key knowledge in the MOS transistor. So let me just state this again. So once we apply the gate voltage, which is larger than threshold voltage here, then we start to induce the inversion channel, uh, inversion electrons in the channel. And this inversion electron channel will be shown in this surface just below our dielectric here. At the meantime, because we apply the VD bias, this is positive drain bias will attract the electron. So electron will start to flow from source to drain and indeed leading to become the drain current here. So that's why we start to have a drain current as shown in the IDVG characteristic. Okay, so on that hand, if we apply, consider for the n-type substrate here, 
So if we uh, consider for the n sub here, then we can see that uh, how this hole can be generated as well. So you can see this is still the same. The phi s will be equal to 2 phi fn. This is condition to uh, for the threshold hole condition. And then under this condition, we will start to have the hole will accumulate here. We have a whole accumulation. This is a case we consider we have a large negative bias here. So we start to have the whole accumulate below our dielectric. And then the equation here is still the same. Phi Fn is equal to Vt natural law Nd over Ni here. So now you can see uh, under these negative bars in the n sub, we start to have the, the whole current here. So that's because of we hope to have the IDVG characteristic as shown in here. This is ID and this is VG here. So first of all, we have the electrons apply and then increase. And this is our VTH here. And the reason we have the current in this way, this is because we have the electron inversion, right? So this is happened in the P-type substrate here. But because we have an electron inversion, so that's we also consider as an n-channel mostly. So that's usually we call this as almost for the short name we also consider this one as uh, uh, the almost here but on the other hand if this is happen in the n substrate so the n substrate will apply the large large negative bias so we have a large negative bias then we can start to have the whole inversion we have a whole inversion here and then we have the vth as well back here and right now because we have a whole inversion so we hold this as a p channel mosfet and sometimes in short name we call this as a p mos so we have a p mos we have a mos here so now you can see that the purpose to have the utmost and p most is because of we have, want to have the, this IDVG curve symmetrically. And the reason we want to have this symmetric IDVG curve is because of for the uh, circuit level uh, consideration. So if you put the this one, this is a symbol for the MOSFET and this is simple for another MOSFET and this is a P MOS and this is a MOS here and then uh, we will connect this together this is our output and this is our input here and uh, usually we put the one P MOS and a MOS together connect together and that's how we call this as a CMOS here. And then the purpose to have CMOS is to perform the inverter. So the inverter, it means that if we provide the signal, that's mainly for the digital circuit application, we provide the signal of zero here. And that will be leading to the, in the output signal of the one. And also, if we give the input signal of the one here, so that's give us the output signal of the zero here. So this is mainly for the digital circuit that we have the inverter to transform our zero and one input to us uh, one and zero in output here. So that's a fundamental 
a block for the digital circuit. And this is needed to be realized by one NMOS plus one PMOS here. Okay, so the next one is we start to consider calculate the service charge density here. So the service charge density, first of all, we back to the some basic equation that our n equal to ni exponential ef minus efi over kt here. And then we can know that the, the ef minus efi is equal to phi fp. Phi fp. Ef minus ef is equal to phi fp. That's it here. So now your service charge is equal to your ni of a phi fp plus your delta phi s. So that's a additional service potential due to our phi s volume. apply voltage so the bias is due to our applied voltage here then we can start to calculate this equation and then we can define this one as a nst this is nst and also so therefore the, this one is our nst so the meaning of this NST is uh, the meaning of the service charge is telling us that the, the inversion charge density increased by a factor by a factor of the 10 with 60 millivolt increase of the delta bias. So that means if we want to have the 10 times increase of our service charge here, therefore your delta phi s is needed for the 60 millivolt increase here. So that's actually has the fundamental limitation of how fast the charge can be generated in the service inside when we give the the gate bias here so you can see from this graph this is our service charge density with our service potential here so the the best we can achieve is that we increase this one delta bias equal to 60 millivolt and then we can have a 10 times increase of our service charge. So that actually means that if we consider the, usually we consider log ID versus the VG here. And then this is a, the slope here and we have the slope here with this one and this one here so that means when we want to have a 10 times id increase we need to at least have additional 60 millivolt that we want to apply and therefore we can have the a definition of this parameter 
That's how we call this as a substantial force law. Or sometimes we call substantial force swing is equal to 60 millivolt per decade. So that's this one is very important parameter because this parameter is become the very hot research topic nowadays. If you look at the device that we want to make for the below the five nanometer, one of the purpose is trying to reduce the voltage drop, uh, reduce the applied voltage. That also means that uh, we need to break the rule of the substitution or slow, this kind of rule, because if we cannot make the device have the lower substrate flow beyond the sub 60 millivolt per decade, that means we will never able to become to make the device which has a lower power uh, voltage applied but with higher current uh, output current. So therefore, how do we break the substrate slow? How do we make the device? which has a lower substitution slope is the actually the very hot research topic, not only in the last five years, I guess in the future 10 years is always very hot research topic right now. Okay, so I think we have been already introduced many, many concepts here. So we can probably uh, stop here and you can have the digest and then we will start to assign the homework here. And it's time that I know most of you probably just still in the uh, mood of after the midterm. So you still might be still in a very relaxed, relaxed uh, uh, mindset. But now it's time to pick up the books and start to review what we have been talking about after the midterm, especially the last time we have been talking about the PN diode. The concept of the PN diode is necessary that uh, we can apply to understand of the MOS transistor. And also the PN junction is also very crucial for later on to understand the BZT here. So these are the two most important transistors that you will use very often here. So therefore, we will stop our class today. So if you have any question, you can feel free to let me know now. So if you don't have the questions, you can leave earlier. It's no problem for me. So I will stay in this room.那个课本的图九之十三啊，是它是不是大于小于打错了？课本图，你说课本的吗？对，就是这个人九点十三，九点十三。哎，等我一下，我要我要看一下课本。好。Professor, if you want to ask you something. I uh, just wait a moment. Uh, okay. There's uh, uh, another one who asked me. Uh, you say the figure 9.13.对,它这里写5M小于5S,但是下面的那个段落是写5M大于5S. Uh, yes, I think this in the textbook of um, bigger knife 
point 13 that should be in the case of phi n larger than phi s oh okay thank you okay so anyone else have the question yeah professor professor yes. the transition from uh, uh, phi t uh, to uh, mosfet uh, we introduced the oxide layer right so yes. the, the the fast most important or the uh, objective of introduction of the oxide it's due to uh, what basis the, the, the main purpose to have the oxide is able to have the electron accumulation so you can see like here so this is a dielectric this is our oxide and once we apply the enough bias here we start to form many the electrons in here you can imagine that if we don't have oxide what will happen if you don't have insulator here all this electron will directly flow into the gate side and therefore you won't have the channel below in this region so the main purpose to have the dielectric here is able to make sure this electron can safely and nicely stay here and later on become our channel here so if you don't have oxide because we apply a very large gate by so the electron will be directly flow from here to the top and therefore you won't have the current flow to the right hand side and this can be only happen if we have the insulator here Try to make sure that electron can stay nicely in this region. Also, can I say that uh, uh, when we want to use a, a higher uh, power, so we need to have an oxide device? Yeah, that's true. That's usually to, to come better control the leakage current, the MOSFET with a dielectric is always a very good option. And now I understood. Thank you, Professor. Okay, no problem. So I will open this uh, stay in the webex until 12.10. So if you have any question, you are still welcome. Uh, will the midterm be sent to us after you checked our answers? Yes, I'm still doing the grading now. So we will release the result uh, hopefully uh, by the end of May release the result in May because we have more than 60 submissions and you know that uh, there are many questions so the 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 loading for you to answer the questions is also the same loading for me to grade it, the result here because when we grade the result we are not only check your answer is just purely correct or not Sometimes we need to go to the detail to check the the procedure, the process, how you get the answer. So that will take some time. And will the final exam cover what we have taught in the midterm exam? Yes, that will be from the beginning to the end of this class, from the chapter one to the last chapter. Because of the knowledge you actually, for example, let's say that the, the one we calculate for the MOSFET, we still need the knowledge that we use to calculate PN junction or even some of the 
equation we needed to calculate the, the concentration under the equilibrium case or something even when we call to the BJT. So later we will talk about the condition under the, the extra carrier, the excess carrier and low low things are actually the very crucial when we already have before the meeting. So those information for sure are not excluded from the, the final exam as well. So I saw that uh, there are around like 20 students still online. And I assume that uh, you probably actually already, uh, your mind is already going somewhere else because I would say it's already the time for the off. But it's fine that uh, always like for the online lecture is that uh, uh, you need to push yourself to follow the class from the professor point of view that the, well this is graduate study it's not like the high school or even like the elementary school course that the, I need to force everyone to fully concentrate but even though you are not uh, able to fully concentrate at this moment it's fine that the, anyway we will upload the video we will provide the electron notes you can always have the time to have self-review or you will be available. So anyone has a uh, questions? Okay, since there's no response for the, anyone else, so I assume that uh, there will be no further questions. So I will start to close this uh, uh, material and I will see everyone in next week. See you next time.